going to install the laptop stand onto my side cabinet. This is going to be the cabinet that I think I'm going to use the most. So I'm going to mount the laptop stand, run most of my electronics through here. On the opposite side, I'll have my screens. And... The directions for this stand were pretty easy. Again, this will be linked in our uh, description here, but uh, I'm just trying to figure out how I want to incorporate it on my side cabinet. I ordered this specifically so it wasn't the clamp, but it was the bolt that goes through. So I'm just measuring the placement I want for it and where I want that bolt to go through. One thing I did have to do was I shortened the bolt, uh, which it wasn't surprising to me. Uh, this way I can still slide things in and out of that lower tray. And then I'm just taking a little bit of uh, a chamfer onto my dowel pins, make them uh, slide in and out of those holes nice and easy. Then I drilled a quarter inch uh, hole through the three quarter inch dowel and I slid in a quarter inch dowel into it and then held it into place with a little bit of CA glue. Learned this trick from uh, James King on King's Fine Woodworking. This was a great solution so I just decided to just carry it on to my, to my uh, cart. And then I finished it off with a heavy coat of wax. This will make it slide in and out of those pinholes very easy and here I am ripping my drawer faces I'm trying to keep track of the continuous grain so that I can make it look as nice as I can on the front so what I did was I marked the entire width and height and then I cut directly in the middle of all of those leaving a 1 8 curve gap in between all of the faces what I'm doing here and referencing off the ground, uh, <laughs> use a better method because I end up having to rip these off and do them again. But uh, I did just end up clamping them, drove a couple of staples in the back side, and then I screwed them. Here's the uh, drawer face for the uh, laptop stand or additional table there. I just used a piano hinge to attach that. And here we are finishing it up with my favorite sandpaper, Clings for Braces. They are part of a sponsorship for this video, and I can't thank them enough for providing me uh, all the sandpaper. It was an absolute pleasure using this. I've uh, not found a really nice alternative uh, other than the um, Festool paper. And I finally have. This is much more affordable, and it puts such a be better finish on it. So thanks, Mike, for sponsoring this video and uh, look forward to many years of your braces. And I hit, hit it first with 120 and then I finished at 180. I'm going to use Armor Seal for my top coat here and I never go above a 180 just so it penetrates it super deep. And uh, I don't mind putting additional coats on. I just want to make sure that it penetrates it good enough. And sure enough, shortly after making the, the video, I. I had some finish left in a solo cup and it's dripped through and I thought I stained the top for sure but I was able to sand through the finish and it protected the wood and I was able just to just put some more back on it. Get a friend help you get over the X-Carve and uh, position it where you want it and then use those gussets and the 5mm uh, by 10mm 
uh, screw with the uh, sliding T-nut in there. And then I use the washer head screw to lock it down. The benefit of the torsion bottom is, is if you do uh, surface a wasteboard for part of your operation, this will always stay flat as long as you uh, keep it where it is on that torsion top. Locking these down will ensure that all your rails stay completely flat and level until something changes. So you can essentially have one wasteboard on there for a long, long time, spin it in every direction, and you'll be able to continuously use it. More and more coats. I think I did four on top and three on uh, everything else. And again, this is Armor Seal. Just want something super easy and fast. I waited about three to four hours in between coats and that was fun. And I made sure I went in between each coat with 220 to make it nice and smooth and uh, make sure it adhered to itself. And I apologize for not getting it on video, but I was piecing it together. So this is the gantry holder that will lock the gantry when you're rotating around the uh, X-carve on the 360 top. This will lock it in every direction, keeping everything nice and safe and secure. Also not allowing it to move to possibly give any feedback into the X controller and fry anything out. Um, I'm finishing it here with some, uh, some of the general finishes as well. This is Purple Heart and uh, Tiger Maple. They're absolute just scraps I've had in my shop for over three years. So you can make this out of plywood, anything you'd like. I have detailed instructions on how I made these. These are super simple uh, and a really easy way to take them on and off, but uh, really work well. All right, and here we are at the end. It was a pleasure showing you this build. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell uh, for future videos I have coming up. All the hardware uh, and materials used in this video will be linked. So all you'll have to do ahead of building this is look those up, uh, order them, and they'll be ready for assembly. I hope everything in this video was helpful to you. Please leave us a comment if we can help out in any further way. Thanks so much. Take care.